So if you were to ask me, Mike, what is management really like? I'm going to say jail. It's like in jail. Welcome to the channel Leadership with Mike. On this channel, I help new managers become confident leaders with no nonsense sense, if that makes any sense. Now, you're going to say, Mike, jail? You're telling me I've picked a career that's like jail? No. What I'm going to tell you is when you're working in management and you're starting a new job, picture yourself in a Hollywood film and you've been put in prison. So you are going to have the same stereotypical Hollywood type people on your team. Now, let's break down who these people are. So you've got the gang members. These guys are hard. They peer pressure you. They kind of push you around into things, trying to get you to see it their way. They're going to try and take you under their wing so you're on their side. They don't want too many changes. They want you to fall in line and be one of the gang members. They're going to maybe butter you up. They're going to buy you coffee. They're going to, again, just... Try to really hard. They're going to try to get you to see things their way. Why you shouldn't change this. Why you better get ready to change that. The next person that you're going to work with or you're going to meet are the people that they're just in to do their time. <laughs> work sometimes does feel like jail from what I've heard. <laughs> but they're just there to put in their time. They don't care what you say. They don't care what you do, just tell them what is it you want and let them do their job. They're not there to rally for any cause. They're not there to cause you any problems. They just want to come in, punch the clock, do the job that they were hired to do and, and do it rather well. Punch out and call it a day. These people aren't going to get worked up because you're doing something, because you're trying to change something. They're just going to come in, put their head down and grind out a day. Again, nothing wrong with this. It's a sh not so great life, I think, but at the same time, a job for these people is a means to an end. No harm, no foul. The next people that you're going to meet are the suckers. Now, <laughs> in the stereotypical Hollywood fashion, that means something different than what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is more along the brown nosers, the ones that are just going to suck up to you. They're going to be your best friend. They're going to maybe even snitch on other people, which you may think is, oh great, I've got an inside ear. Don't use it. Put these people in their place because they will ruin the team dynamic if they haven't already. Just get out of my face. I don't need no snitches because snitches get stitches. We're talking jail now, yo. <laughs> But don't be tempted to let these brown nosers, these suck-ups, to really bend your ear. Again, take all information, be pleasant, be welcoming, but don't let on that snitching is okay. If there's a big problem and they see something, of course, come to me with information. But don't come to me to snitch and say that James was coming in five minutes late. I'll figure that out. If that becomes a problem, I will know about it. I don't need you to tell me. now. If you are finding this information useful, humorous, or whatnot, I would suggest you hit the subscribe button for you. What you could do for me though, hit the like button. Let's move on. The next group of people that you're going to meet are those wise, yet sometimes miserable, old f You know the ones. They're watching you. They're sitting back. They ain't saying nothing, but they know the ins and the outs. They know what's happening, why it's happening, where it's happening. And these are the ones. You can't throw yourself on these people, but these are the ones that you want to get on your side, so to speak. These are the ones that you want to go to with questions. Not in an annoying way, but in a genuine, I'm interested in why are we doing it this way? Why do we do this? Why do we do that? These group of people, they just know. And they have wisdom that they've earned over the years. And when you're the new cat in town, you don't have the wisdom. 
Don't pretend you do. The old guy, that is your key to surviving this workplace. Next, you can't forget, there's gonna be the thug. The one that wants to put a message out on you. The one that's gonna come after you. Now here's what I suggest. I look at these people as the bullies. They wanna set the tone for their coworkers that they run the joint. You do not, under any circumstances, allow for this to happen. If you're having your first staff meeting and they want to come in and they're kind of cutting you down with sarcasm and they're kind of being a little disruptive, you stop your meeting, you call them out and you say, this is not acceptable. Let's move forward like adults. After the meeting, and I mean, don't say that exactly because I'm kind of paraphrasing here. Say what works, but call them out. Let them know that this is not going to fly. After the meeting, have a one-on-one -on -one chat. Figure out what the issue is. You need to deal with this right off the get, because if you don't, it is going to get worse. It is going to get harder. And as you allow somebody to treat you this way, you're going to find that other people think that they can treat you that way. And that is not okay under any circumstances. So figuratively speaking, you want to punch this thug in the nose. I'm not telling you to go out in the yard, pick the biggest guy and punch him in the head. What I'm saying is don't let somebody who has experience, who has seniority, who has leverage with the team, don't let them back you into a corner and make you cower. That is an unacceptable position for you as a leader to be in. I'm, again, have discussions, figure things out, but be firm and fair as to how you will let them treat you because people do treat you the way you allow it to happen. Now, there's one more group that we need to talk about here. This is going to be your colleagues, your peers, your fellow corrections officers. And the thing is, most of them are gonna be okay. And most of them are going to fall into the, I'm just here, quiet, I'm gonna grind, I'm gonna do my thing. But you're gonna also be able to kind of filter them into the same categories as the prisoners. One might be a thug, a bully. One might be that old crusty bastard that just knows how to get things done, how to make it easy, how to get the team on board. That's the one you wanna to gravitate to. But again, these are your colleagues, this is your team. I say being in prison like it's tongue in cheek because if you've picked the right career, if you've put time into developing yourself, you should, hopefully, enjoy the job. And it's going to be, of course, nerve wracking if you're starting a new job or you've been promoted. But just understand that these groups of people do exist. As much as Hollywood and movies and everything kind of make fun of them and, and really pigeonhole them into certain roles, most people are great people. Most people want to see you succeed. But these little groups of people, these little groups of prisoners, the stereotypes are there for a reason. And it's the same for at work. So now let's get your ass out of jail for good behavior because you've made it to the end. <laughs> get your coffee and let's go to the next video. Ciao.